And good day, everybody. Welcome to today's Retirement Genius Brainstorm webinar, Seven Strategies to Avoid LTC Bankruptcy. I'm your host, Chris Arrestis, President of Retirement Genius. I thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Retirement Genius is an information and resource platform to help people achieve a well-balanced retirement. We work with consumers and we work with advisors on financial planning, information and strategies, health and long-term care, security planning and strategies, and lifestyle strategies. We believe it takes bringing these three components of retirement together to create a well-balanced retirement so everybody can retire like a genius. What I want to do is talk today about ways to avoid letting long-term care be a financial burden that can bankrupt people. It's a very expensive proposition. And the reality is that too few people are preparing for long-term care. It's primarily something people want to avoid, delay, it's confusing, it's an unpleasant topic to discuss. It's really the last thing people and families want to think about. But avoiding the realities of long-term care is actually a very dangerous proposition for people, particularly financially, as well as with their health. And what do some of the current statistics tell us about the realities of where we are today? Well, when you look at our current population, as of the beginning of 2022, we had 332 million people living in this country with 55 million of them age 65 and above. That's almost 17% of America's population. And that aging cohort is continuing to grow. The average life expectancy in this country is 76 and a half years. For men, it's below the average, 71 years. And for, for women, it's above the average at, at a little over 81 years. Today, a 65-year-old a person has a 35% chance if they're male and a 46% chance if they're female to live to age 90. And, and the, the, obviously, the older and longer somebody's living, the, the higher the probability is that they're going to need long-term care. Now, for years, we've been hearing the statistic, people age 60 are, are turning 65 in the baby boomer generation at a clip of 10,000 people a day. Well, guess what? In, in 2025, that's in two and a half years, that baby boomer cohort starts turning 80. So that the baby boomers are aging and you can see males and females, what the, what the current expectation is for life expectancy. It has reduced a bit over the last couple of years, a lot of the impact coming from uh, what we experienced in COVID from COVID deaths in 20, 2020 and 2021. So the reality is for people who are avoiding delaying preparing for long-term care, 70% of people in this country over the age of 65 are going to need some formal type of long-term care. And the numbers are pretty big. People receiving long-term care today in a home-based environment, you have 12 million Americans, and a lot of those people are receiving care from loved ones, informally receiving care from loved ones. In a skilled nursing facility, 1.3 million Americans and in an assisted living a little over 800,000 Americans receiving care uh, in this country as of this year. The average couple who would retire now at the age of 65 is going to spend close to $300,000 on medical costs over the, the, the duration of their remaining years in retirement. Uh, a very expensive proposition if you are not prepared to handle that. And who's paying for care? Well, cost of care is expensive. Home care, on average, across this country is about $5,000 a month. Assisted living, a little less at $4,500 a month. And skilled nursing is, is very expensive, whether it's home-based or, or in a nursing home. Uh, a semi-private room in a nursing home, $7,900 a month. A private room, $9,000. And, and those numbers are in the range of if you are getting skilled nursing at, at home as well. Uh, entitlements pay a big chunk of long-term care in this country. Medicaid covers about 35% of long-term care costs in this country. Medicare 
covers about 25%, but remember, that's only for short-term rehabilitation. Uh, you're only gonna get 100 days of Medicare coverage in a skilled rehabilitation facility, and only 20 days of that 100 are 100% coverage. After uh, 20 days, you have 80 days of 80-20, 20% uh, of the cost coming out of pocket, and 33% of cost for long-term care in this country is paid out of pocket. Only 4% of costs in, in uh, long-term care, re regardless of where it's received, is covered by a long-term care insurance policy. There's just not enough long-term care insurance policies that were sold in this country. So in terms of who's planning for care, the statistics bear out what I say, that people are avoiding this. They don't want to think about it. Uh, they do say that 62% of people would purchase long-term care insurance if they were confronted with a health crisis, either for themselves or very closely to a loved one. But so often that will trigger the fact that it's too late. If, if a long-term care crisis, a health crisis is triggering your need for care, which so many agents run into that frustration, uh, it's too late oftentimes to, to purchase long-term care insurance as a solution. And the reality is, is 64% of people have done little to no planning. 85% of people don't even think they're ever going to need care in their future. But 82% of those people say if they did need care, they would figure out a way to afford it and be able to get the care they want, which the reality is if they haven't prepared for it, it's, it becomes a very difficult proposition to, to get the care you want uh, and which is why so many people end up going towards ending up on Medicaid. Uh, and in terms of preparation, insurance in this country, you have seven and a half million enforced long-term care insurance policies today in this country. You have 255 million life insurance policies, and you have two and a half trillion dollars of enforced premiums sitting in annuities today. So costs of care, and the impact on the family. You gotta remember, it isn't just the individual. Long-term care is a family proposition. It's a family journey. It sucks the family in. Family members become care providers. Family members end up digging into their pockets. It involves everybody. And, and, and that reality is very underestimated by the people who are avoiding thinking about and planning for long-term care. So for those people, what are the solutions that they can look to if they haven't adequately prepared for the realities of long-term care in their future? What are solutions that they can turn to? Well, obviously, for the seven and a half million people who have bought long-term care insurance policies, that's a very viable option to help pay for some of the costs of long-term care. Oftentimes, long-term care insurance policies are not going to cover everything you want, may not even cover the type of care specifically you were hoping for but it is a viable option to help pay for some of the costs of long-term care. Of course, the trick is, as is the case with all insurance, it, it, it's all about buying it the younger and healthier you are to be able to get the kind of coverage at the rates that become uh, affordable. Uh, and too many people delay this process until it's way too late. So what are the options that are available to the people who have delayed preparing, have not adequately prepared, they're now in their senior years, and they're in need of care now, immediate need for care. What are some of the solutions? Well, let's talk about some of the long-term care funding options that people can turn to to help them avoid bankruptcy, the need to spend down the potential of declaring bankruptcy because of the realities of the cost of long-term care. Let's start by looking at some annuity-based options. First, there's the PPA annuity, the Pension Protection Act annuity, which was established in 2006, which allows for the funding of annuities under very favorable conditions for the purposes specifically of funding long-term care needs. A PPA annuity can be funded by the 1035 exchange of non-qualified annuity funds rolled over into a PPA annuity. Also, the exchange of cash surrender value can be rolled over into a PPA annuity. It can also be cash funded, and oftentimes a life settlement or, or other uh, access to liquidity is a, a method to fund a PPA annuity, 
but uh, you cannot transfer IRA funds or qualified funds into a PPA annuity. The underwriting to get uh, uh, qualify for a PPA annuity is pretty straightforward. You're gonna, the uh, applicant is going to answer five health questions, all no. Uh, there'll be a phone interview, which is really a, a, a check on their cognitive understanding and ability. Uh, and then once they've funded the PPA annuity, it will allow for a three times value increase on the premium put into the annuity if there's a need to start funding long-term care, it, which is triggered by two ADLs or more, which then creates a long-term care pool of funds, all tax-free, that is a 3x increase on the premium that was put into the annuity. So if somebody puts $100,000 into the annuity, and they get to the point that they need long-term care and they have two ADLs or more, it's going to trigger a 3X increase from 100,000 to $300,000 in that annuity to be used for long-term care purposes. That is paid out over a 72 month payout uh, timeframe, but there are options to create a lifetime payout as well. Uh, a person who puts the money into the PPA annuity can, draw down off of the, the initial premiums that were put in. Uh, and then if they have the 280L trigger, it will 3X whatever available balance is left. So let's say that person had put 100,000 in, had started drawing down for a monthly income, had spent through 20,000 of it, needed uh, long-term care, triggered the 3X increase, the increase would be on the remaining 80,000 of premium in the annuity. Uh, and there, there's a survivorship guarantee payback of whatever premium was put in less any funds that were drawn down at the time uh, the person dies. So it's not a use it or lose it uh, annuity. It's an annuity that will return the money less anything that's been spent from the original premium uh, at the time of death. Let's take a look at the medically underwritten SPIA. Now this is an immediate annuity that will provide a higher monthly income to people with impairments, uh, suffering loss of ADLs who need long-term care supports and services and want to establish a guaranteed income stream for life. So this is a, 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 a SPIA that is medically underwritten and will provide a higher monthly payout the more somebody is uh, impaired. So the more somebody would want to use the medically underwritten SPIA for long-term care purposes, the more impaired they are, the more value they're gonna get from the money they put into, their, into the annuity based on the monthly payouts from the underwriting. Uh, it, there's an optional cost of living increase that can be purchased that uh, is between one to 8%. There's an early death benefit option for the first six months, as well as an enhanced death benefit option rider that can be purchased over, over a period of one to five years. The age range to qualify is between 70 and 95 with a minimum of a $50,000 premium into uh, the medically underwritten SPIA. There's also the Medicaid compliant annuity, which is a tool to help people that are in a spend down situation where you have a couple where one needs to go on to Medicaid and, and is going to access some form of care. And the other, uh, the other uh, member of the couple is, is in not in need of care or to go on to Medicaid. Money can be put into a Medicaid compliant annuity as part of their spend down, which will isolate that money from the Medicaid eligibility for, for their loved one. Uh, and it will set up an income stream over the remainder of that person's life who's getting uh, Medicaid funded care. So somebody could continue to, to protect some of their funds and continue to receive an income while their loved one is on Medicaid and receiving care, uh, which, which could last for you know, one, three, five years. The Medicaid compliant annuity structure is gonna be an irrevocable uh, annuity. It's non-assignable. And it has to be established on, actuarially, on an actuarially sound basis for what is the remainder of the, the person who is going on to Medicaid and receiving care's lifetime. It will set up an equal payment stream to the non-Medicaid spouse. 
Uh, and then the state is going to be set up as either the primary or the contingent beneficiary, uh, depending on the state rules for where the Medicaid compliant annuity would be established as part of that couple's Medicaid spend down plan. Now let's talk about the LTC life settlement, an area that Retirement Genius uh, special has specialized in and pioneered over the last 15 years. The LTC Life Settlement, we created it back in 2007. It's available in all 50 states. Uh, the LTC Life Settlement will cover immediate need for senior living and long-term care services by liquidating a life insurance policy and turning those funds into an available pool of tax-free money for a person with an immediate need for care all forms of care are covered by an LTC life settlement, home care, assisted living, skilled care, memory care, and hospice care. It'll go into a, the funds from an LTC life settlement go into a long-term care benefit account, which is very similar to a health savings account. It's a, it's, think of it as a private market health savings account uh, that is funded through the tax-free proceeds from the LTC life settlement for somebody who has an immediate need for care. Um, the, the funds are protected and payments are directed towards senior care services. It's not long-term care insurance. It's not an annuity. It's important to differentiate. This is not an insurance-based product. It's actually a, a bank account that's holding the funds, protecting the funds to be used for care. So there's no wait periods, no claims to file. You have immediate access to the funds in the long-term care benefit account from the LTC life settlement, which will start making those payments immediately as soon as the funds are in the account. And the account can be adjusted by the account holder anytime they need as care needs change. So if the type of care that they're covering, if the cost of care increases, the type of care changes, they can make those changes to the account in real time to meet their changing needs. Also, so, for the person who is going to do the LTC life settlement, the funds can be tax free if they're medically diagnosed as chronic in their conditions, two ADLs or more, or terminal, two years or less of life expectancy. Also, any remaining balance that's in the account if the person passes away while there's still funds in the account, that's going to transfer to their account beneficiaries. And that can be also a tax free transfer as long as it's below the estate tax limit in the year that, that they would receive that uh, account transfer of the funds. Uh, the funds in the account are paid towards care in a fashion that is recognized as a Medicaid qualified spend down. So while the person is using the account, they're private pay. They have the full fair market value of the settlement for, of their policy in a protected account that is being used to pay towards care. Uh, so they are spending those funds down private pay until they spend it through. If they exhaust the account, they can make a seamless transition from there over to Medicaid with, with, without any uh, delays. And we've worked with Medicaid departments for years uh, and the account uh, showing all the records and the use of funds makes it makes for a very easy orderly transition from being private pay to going on to Medicaid. This has received numerous endorsements over the years, the National Conference of Insurance Legislators, the National Association of Insurance Commissioners, there's pending legislation in Congress, the SHIPA Act, the Senior Health Planning Account Act to formally establish uh, the long-term care benefit account uh, as a form of HSA recognized by the IRS. Uh, and it's received all kinds of media coverage over the years. I encourage anybody uh, that's interested in learning more to, to just Google uh, long-term care benefit account, retirement genius, my name, Chris Arestis. You will find a lot of great information out there over the years, written about this in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, AARP, uh, CLTC has, has, has taught courses on this and talked about it. You'll find a lot of good industry and, and, and coverage uh, all across the country on this. So let's talk for a minute also now about the use of equity in a home through a reverse mortgage. A home equity conversion mortgage or an HECM is, is a reverse mortgage secured by the value of a home. It's an FHA insured non-recourse loan, which will provide access to the equity that someone has in their home in the form of a lump sum, 
uh, establishing a monthly income or putting in place a line of credit that can be drawn down off of as needed. And one of the advantages, a big advantage to using the reverse mortgage is that you don't need to make monthly payments on the money you've taken out. It's paid back when a person know when the when the person who's taken out the reverse mortgage leaves their home. So you're not making any, you know, you're you're not making any any monthly payments. You are accruing interest. Uh, there are fees, and and the the loan does need to be satisfied in the end, oftentimes by the sale of the home. But for the time period that the person has the reverse mortgage in place, living in the home, they are not responsible for making any monthly payments. Uh, you need to be age 62 or older to qualify for a reverse mortgage. It can only be done on your primary residence. There's going to be origination and servicing fees. There's going to be accrued interest. And the upper limit as of now for, for what you can take out is $970,800. Let's also review quickly the VA aid and attendance benefit, another strategy where somebody can avoid potentially going bankrupt from the cost of long-term care. This is a monthly long-term care benefit that's paid to veterans who've served in active, active periods of war for, and, and this benefit will serve them and or their spouse. So for the veteran by themselves collecting the VA aid and attendance benefit, they can get as of this year, $2,050 a month. The veteran and their spouse, if they're both receiving care can combine collect $2,431 and a surviving spouse who would be collecting by themselves uh, without the primary veteran uh, alive any longer could collect $1,318 a month towards their care needs. You would need to have an honorable discharge from the military, served in the a minimum of 90 days during an active period, uh, 90 days of active duty with one day served during an active period of war, uh, you would, there are income and asset limits that are applied to qualifying for the VA aid and attendance benefit, very much similar uh, now to qualifying for Medicaid. The minimum age is 65. And the use of funds would need to be based on a disability or a need for long-term care services. Lastly, I wanna also touch on senior bridge loans, which is another option people can, can tap into. It's, a, it's another way to get a home equity home equity line of credit secured against the home. This is borrowing only what you need on a monthly basis uh, to cover the cost of care until the loan could be repaid. Usually this is a bridge to sell a home. Let's say somebody's trying to sell a home and use those funds to pay for their care and they don't want to delay their need for care. They could use the senior bridge loan for a period of time. Let's say it was for three months, six months, a year while they're selling the home. The sale of the home would then pay back the bridge loan, but they could immediately start accessing care while the home is, either, is, is up for sale, being prepared for sale. Um, this is, this is, this is uh, then paid directly, the payments on a monthly basis from the bank to the care provider. It could be assisted living, home care, CCRC. It could also cover the entry fees as well as the monthly fees. And then the person who takes out the senior bridge loan is making interest only payments for the first 60 months, which would be a, a long duration to keep a senior bridge loan out. Usually it's going to be much uh, shorter time frame than 60 months. You're making interest only payments. The, 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 the home is sold and the loan is then paid off. So Let's just look at the realities in the solutions we're dealing with. The U.S. is an aging population. There's a declining life expectancy and there's limited financial safety nets. You're only going to get so far on Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and it's important that people understand what the costs of retirement and long-term care really are and the impact that it will have on them and their family if they're not adequately prepared for what it takes to actually fund uh, not only your, your ongoing living costs in retirement, but then the impact of, of long-term care. We're seeing the use of alternative financial solutions like annuities, LTC life settlements, reverse mortgages, VA benefits, bridge loans 
becoming very mainstream now. There's a much more awareness in the market uh, from where we were five years ago, 10 years ago. I mean, 15 years ago when we first brought LTC life settlements into the market. It's become very mainstream. There's a lot of advertising on TV, online. And these solutions are growing in use as the aging baby boomer population ages and is, has more demands on accessing resources for long-term care. And, and agents and advisors are very well positioned to use these tools in your toolbox as part of being a problem solver, bringing solutions to the table. What people are looking for isn't insurance agents that are selling products. It's advisors who are helping advise them how to plan for, live in retirement, and deal with the costs of long-term care. And, and it's adding these solutions to the mix so that agents and advisors are in a position to help their clients, help their clients' family members, such as aging parents that are, are creating a, a, a draw on their, on their own incomes and savings. You've got a lot of people that are still working, saving for retirement, supporting their kids, getting them through college. And all of a sudden now they have to help support their parents and loved ones that are dealing with the fact that they didn't adequately prepare for the costs of long-term care. These tools are immediately available, quick to access uh, for, for people who, who have a home with equity have a life insurance policy, served are a veteran, uh, have liquidity a, 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 in to, to put into annuities. These are tools that are, are quickly, readily available to help them solve their problems, but also to create revenue streams for agents and advisors who can all um, make either referral fees or commissions off of adding these solutions to, to what you're working with your clients on. So in conclusion, I want to encourage you to uh, contact us at 888-627-3735 and get your copy of uh, our Retirement Genius Tip Sheet, the white paper, Seven Strategies to Avoid LTC Bankruptcy. Give us a call. We'd love to get that over to you. Um, and we always encourage you to visit our website, retirementgenius.com for consumers. And for you as advisors, we invite you to work with us to access these, these tools and more through advisors.retirementgenius.com. You want to put these non-traditional alternative solutions into your mix so you're ready to help your clients address any potential need for funding and solutions to help what they're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis and add more ways for you to grow your practice in the process. So I want to thank you so much for visiting us again on our Retirement Genius Brainstorm webinar. Uh, also always encourage you go over to our Retirement Genius podcast. Uh, wherever you get your podcast, type in Retirement Genius, follow our podcast, get your white paper, reach out to us. We wanna talk to you. We look forward to And we look forward to talking to you again on our next Retirement Genius Brainstorm webinar.